I was 19 when I started working as a pizza delivery driver. It was a pretty straightforward job, but one delivery still haunts me to this day. I remember it was a slow Tuesday night when an order came in for a delivery to a hotel on the edge of town. I'd heard stories about this place, a seedy, rundown spot known for its shady guests. It was a rainy winter night and I had just recently acquired my license so I drove slowly. I arrived at the place sometime after. The hotel looked even worse up close, with its flickering neon sign and grimy windows. I hesitated for a moment in the parking lot, taking a deep breath before heading inside. The lobby was dimly lit, with a musty smell that made me wrinkle my nose. I told the bored-looking clerk the room number, and he just jerked his thumb towards the stairs without a word. Climbing the creaky stairs, I could hear muffled voices and the sound of a TV blaring from one of the rooms. I finally reached the right room and knocked, balancing the pizza box in my hand. An older man, maybe in his sixties, opened the door. He was wearing a stained wife beater and had a leering smile that made my skin crawl. I handed the pizza box over to him, but he didn't take it. Instead, he stepped back and gestured for me to come in. Why don't you come in? Come on in, don't be shy, he said, his voice oily and unsettling. There was no way I was getting inside. I looked inside and there was a young boy, about 16, sitting on the edge of the bed. He was shirtless and looked as uncomfortable as I felt. Me, look, I bet you two would be really, really good friends. Alarm bells were ringing in my head. Everything about this situation screamed danger. I took a step back, shaking my head. I told him that I couldn't go inside, as it was against hotel policy. The man frowned, his eyes narrowing. He rummaged in his pocket and pulled out some crumpled bills, handing them to me. I gave him the pizza, our fingers brushing briefly, and I suppressed a shudder. As I turned to leave, I glanced at the boy again. His eyes met mine, and there was a silent plea in them that I couldn't ignore. I felt a knot of worry in my stomach, but what could I do? I was just a pizza delivery girl. Back in my car, I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. I kept thinking about the boy in that room. I should have done something, said something, but fear had rooted me to the spot. When I got back, I told my manager about the delivery. I don't know if it was concern for the boy or just to cover himself, but he called the police. I don't know what happened after that, but I hope they checked on the boy. I asked my manager what happened a few days later, but he said that he never received a call back from an officer. I sincerely hope that everything was okay, even though I have a strong feeling that it wasn't. I had been working as a food delivery driver for a couple of years, and I thought I had seen pretty much everything the job could throw at me. It was a typical Friday evening, and I was hustling to get as many orders delivered as I could. The tips were good that day, and I thought I'd do a few more deliveries before calling it a night. One order came in for a delivery to a part of town I wasn't very familiar with. It was a residential area, but more isolated than what I was used to. It had just started snowing pretty heavily before I picked up the food from the restaurant and headed out. I found the address using my phone, without much trouble. It was a large, but somewhat run-down house at the end of a dark street. The front yard was full of trash, and the house itself was poorly lit. I walked up to the front door with the food. The door was open a crack, which was odd. I rang the bell, but there was no answer. Pushing the door slightly, I called out, Hello? Food delivery? Still no response. I was about to leave the food at the door and mark the delivery as completed when I heard a voice from inside the house. Come in, or in the back. Something about the situation didn't sit right with me. Why would they be in the back of the house and leave the front door open? I hesitated 
then decided to take a few steps inside to see if I could get a better view of the back area. As I stepped in, the floorboards creaked under my weight. The house was eerily quiet, and it was hard to see much in the dim light. Your food's here, I called out again, louder this time. Keep coming, we're all the way in the back. I walked a few more steps, but my gut feeling was screaming that something was off. I noticed that the house seemed almost empty, with very little furniture and no personal items in sight. It looked more abandoned than lived in. Just then, I heard a faint rustling sound coming from somewhere ahead of me, like someone was trying to be quiet but wasn't quite succeeding. That was the final red flag for me. I quickly turned around and headed straight for the door, picking up my pace. As I reached the front porch, I took a quick glance back and saw someone running down the hall towards me. I hurried to my car, locked the doors, and drove off as fast as I could. Once I was a safe distance away, I pulled over and tried to calm my racing heart. I called the police to report the incident, giving them the address and explaining what had happened. They told me they would check it out and thanked me for the information. For the rest of the night, I kept thinking about how close I had come to falling into what I was sure was a trap. I had no idea what was waiting for me in that house, but I was grateful that my instincts had kicked in when they did. The next day, I got an update from the police, and they informed me that the house was empty once they arrived, and nobody lived there. I don't know what whoever was hiding in the back had planned, but it was definitely a close call for me, and I'm lucky I got away in time. I have been a food delivery driver for a while, having worked for several fast food chains and restaurants, but there's one delivery that stands out in my memory. It was a cold and rainy evening in late autumn, and I picked up a pretty big order for a delivery to an area I'd never been before, far on the outskirts of town. The address was for a secluded house, set back from the road and surrounded by dense woods. I drove out following my GPS as the city lights faded behind me. The road became narrower and darker with no streetlights around. Finally, I reached the address. It was an old farmhouse, isolated and looking like it hadn't seen much care in years. I found this a bit odd. It was unusual for someone so far out to order delivery, but I didn't think too much of it at the time. I grabbed the food and made my way quickly to the front door trying not to stand in the rain too long. The house was dark, which was strange considering they were expecting a delivery. I knocked and waited. No response. I knocked again, louder, but still nothing. Just as I was about to leave, I heard a noise from behind the house. Curious, I walked around the side of the farmhouse, thinking maybe the customer was out back. That's when I saw a light on in a shed a short distance from the main house. Approaching the shed, I could hear voices inside, low and urgent. But I couldn't make out the words. I called out, announcing the food delivery, but the voices stopped abruptly, and the light went out. Something didn't feel right. I stood there for a moment, unsure of what to do. Then I decided to head back to my car. As I turned to leave, I saw someone moving in the shadows near the farmhouse. I stopped, straining my eyes to see in the dim light. It was a man, watching me from the darkness. I couldn't see his face, just his silhouette. I called out to him, asking if he'd ordered food. He didn't respond, just kept staring at me. Feeling a growing sense of alarm, I started to walk back to my car, keeping my eyes on the man. He didn't move just continued to watch me. I jumped in the car, locking the doors as soon as I was inside. I took one last look at the farmhouse. It was pitch dark now, the light in the window gone, and the figure I saw was no longer there. I felt a rush of fear and confusion. Who was that man? Why didn't he respond? Just before I drove off, another car approached. 
I recognized it. It was one of the other delivery drivers on shift with me at the time. Carlos. He parked next to me. I rolled down the window and asked him what he was doing here. Carlos said that there was another large order received for this address shortly after I left, so he's delivering it. I got out and hopped in his car to get out of the rain. I told him about what I had seen when trying to deliver the first order, and he got a bit freaked out too. Both orders were for nearly $300 in total, so the boss would have been pretty pissed if we just left. We decided to call the customer. Some guy picked up and Carlos told him we're at the front with the orders. He told us to bring them to the shed just behind the house and hung up. We hesitated, sharing a look of uncertainty, and made our way to the shed in the rain. We knocked, and after a few seconds the door swung open. Two men were standing inside with medical masks on their faces, and one of them holding a shotgun pointed at us. The other told us to empty our pockets and leave everything we had on us on the ground, including our car keys. We quickly complied, giving them everything we had. The two men then came out of the shed, whistled, and three more men came out of the house carrying large boxes. They all got in our cars and drove off. We couldn't believe what just happened. We walked in the rain to the nearest house we could find, knocked on the door and asked the homeowner to phone the police for us, explaining what had happened. Once the police arrived, they took our statements and one of the officers drove us back to the restaurant, while the other units went to the house to investigate. A few days later, we were notified by an officer that our cars were found abandoned two states over, but they weren't able to locate and apprehend the suspects. When they checked out the farmhouse, it had been robbed. Later, we heard rumors that the owner had valuable items in that house like gold, jewels and money, which is what we assumed was in the boxes. I guess they made the two orders so they can steal our cars and make their getaway. But none of this was confirmed by the police, so it's just speculation. Needless to say, the restaurant changed its policy on delivering large orders to unknown and isolated houses.